Oh yeah, it's gonna go. All right, so here we go. We are we are now live. Uh, live from New York. It's Saturday night. Sorry. Actually, you're live from Stanford. Yeah, live from Stanford. That's too funny. All right, it'll take a minute for it to load. There it goes. All right. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Where am I at? Oh, where am I at? Here we go. Woo. Hey everybody, it's Jeremy James. Make sure we okay. You got your headphones on. All right, I just want to make sure we're getting feedback. It's Jeremy James and. Lahana. No, that's not what you agreed to say. Oh, I said I'm back. It's Brittany Day. <laughs> that that's not the way you said it. I know. That's I know. not the way you said it. Um, for those of you guys know um, Lahana, you're you're used to following her. Everything else we've got going on for the show. Um, hold on, I want to make sure we can see the comments. Um, it's already shared in the group. Um, so yeah, so Lahana, Jeremy. And then there's this other strange character coming to at us from how many miles away is it? I guess it's, halfway, it's like halfway around the world. So it's 12, so it's 15,000 kilometers, I think. That's I think common that's what, to talk. What is that? Yeah, miles? I don't math. I, I don't know. What, what is that? I, let me Google that. I don't know what it is. Actually, is let me do this. Miles, 25 divided by two. So 12,000 miles. So that's that's got to be right, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. Let's go. I'm just Googling Kentucky to Australia because that's probably <laughs> the easiest way to do it. No, it'll give me flights. I don't want flights. You well, I do want flights, but oh, it's like $6,000. What is that? If you sell off it's the collection cheap. behind you. Oh, without a doubt. If you sell off all that collection back there at Aussie prices, you'd be able to, you'd be able to be jumping in here like easy peasy. Yeah, I could cool. retire off that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it's that amazing. It, it definitely gets All right, me so by, though. Brent's giving us the conversion. He's saying 1.62. Brent, I have no idea what that means, man. Um, 1.62, that's probably code for something. Anyway, so guys, um, Barstool fans, this is Jez. He's um, also known as, a.k.a. Whiskify, coming at us. Oh, from side of my this side. <laughs> you held up the wrong boob, Jeff. That I was like, I don't know which side is backwards here. I don't know. Like, here it is. That was too awesome. Um, so you, you're you you're you're kicking it on Instagram. You're getting it on Facebook. You're all over the place. I finally got you back active on TikTok because it's going a little stupid. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's going all kinds of fun now. Um, so he's going to be joining us. We're doing things a little bit different tonight. Uh, Matthew Bray, I see you in here. Uh, those of you who are on Facebook, um, if you go to comment and it doesn't come through, it might ask you to do something funky with with well, with StreamYard because we are streaming across multiple platforms right now. Um, so we will be able to see your comments. Um, but we're going to do things a little bit different, change it up a little bit tonight. We're going to start off with a single um, bottle review because we've been trying to hook up with Jez for a while. He had a, uh, an opening in his schedule and we just drink a lot. So there's that. Um, yeah. I know when he told me when you were like, hey, we're going to do the guy who's from Whiskey Five. I've been following you for a long, long time on Instagram. So that was exciting. Oh, he's the Whiskey King. In Australia. Australia. <laughs> he's the whiskey. I think he's the only one drinking bourbon in, whis in, in Australia. But um, yeah. <laughs> so, so now we think of Australia as like one big city. So tell us where you're at in Australia, uh, where you're coming from, and a little bit of your background about what you got going on with Whiskey Five. All right, sure, sure. Well, thank you. It's like start off. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure just to kind of jump on and and talk with you guys over like the long period of time you guys have been active. Um, kick it off. As I said, I'm Jez from Whiskify. Um, I've been talking about American whiskey for about two years, but collecting whiskey in a whole for about eight years. Right. Uh, probably a little bit longer there. Um, so I'm currently situated in New South Wales, which is a state in Australia uh, from Sydney. Majority of people are familiar with it. Right. Uh, it's just on the coast. Uh, so the, what are we, east coast of Australia. So about halfway coast. down on the map. Gotcha. All right. So down on the like, bottom curvy part. Yes. All right. That gets us close, up, right? Yeah, 100%. That's all right. Because here in Kentucky, I don't, I, of course, you know where we're at because you're like studying bourbon and everything else. But most folks just point right to the middle and we're like close enough. Well, no, because you look for how it goes is you got the chef's hat and then you've got the head and then you've got the body and then you've got the boots and then you've got the tray and then you've got the Kentucky Fried Chicken. And that's yeah. where you guys are. Yeah, it, it is true. I remember like 
what's the chef's hat? Is it like it's Minnesota? Minnesota, and then it goes to like Wisconsin. It's like Iowa, no, Wisconsin. Is Wisconsin not in there? I swear, Wisconsin That's is one of the really states. Cool. That, listen, I don't. It's in there somewhere. This, this from Indiana, our, I don't know. This from our geography major. So yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to geography, so it's fine. Like I just like eh, whatever. Awesome. So my wife wants to come see you. Uh, um, hey, that's an. She's more than welcome to. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Now you're married, right? I am married. Good. All right. Don't just throw that out in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of bourbon to go around. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Nice, nice. She's a tequila drinker, so if you have tequila in there, uh, look out. Oh. We'll tear that up, especially if it's in Yeho. Um, I see a Facebook user that's that's commenting. More than welcome to comment. Uh, it's difficult for us to see um, when you comment. If you haven't, um, if my wife's, oh yeah, calm down. <laughs> um, and <laughs> Steve Michael started drinking already. Oh, we got we got guys pre gaming, dude. Let me tell you, this whole tournament has been awesome. I've got guys pre gaming for the show, drinking along beside of me every yeah. night. Sounds like an 10 p.m. No, 10 a.m. It's 20 past 10. Giddy up. Oh, we're going to get you toasted first thing in the morning. Oh, that's that's yeah, fine. Like, it's, it's like it's gonna be a great day. What is it? It's Tuesday down there, right? Yeah, we're, we're Tuesday. So that's crazy. So, Tuesday, uh, 10 23. Hey, I'll be drinking by noon tomorrow because we're going to Heaven Hill. Like, oh, in distilleries. Jealous. Jealous. She's, she's about to take a drink of beer right here on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off camera. Sponsor. <laughs> uh, we need... Ultra, send me all of the water. That's too funny. All right, so we're doing things a little bit differently tonight. We want to have Jazz on. We want to do a, a, a group live stream across this thing, uh, kind of introduce ourselves to his crazy bunch and introduce Jazz to our crazy bunch. Um, if you haven't already, go on Instagram, follow his account because he's awesome. And he's tasting some stuff down there that we can't get a hold of. And he's paying way too much for the stuff we can get a hold of. Um, for some reason, I'm going to have to open up like a shipping thing and just ship him bourbon all day long. Um, so, yeah. Um, Kay and Coco May. Yeah, man. He's from Whiskey Maven. So I good. like the Whiskey oh. Maven. Nice. Hey, he's in here. Love that Dude, game. I bring game, bro. I bring oh, yeah, you're, you're bringing the hate. I love it. <laughs> oh my god. Is he old enough to drink? I don't know. You are you surely you're over 21, right? 26. Tw that was backwards or something. I, I don't know how yeah, that that's well it. it doesn't matter how it is, like it it's still numbers. So five plus five five. Five. yeah, something, something. Well, good deal. All right. So we're gonna do um tonight we're gonna do um, a bourbon. Well, I'm gonna call it a bourbon review. They won't call well, it a bourbon. It's whiskey. It's um fine. but yeah, so we we, um, Jez could get a hold of easily. Where's my camera? Uh, the Jack Daniels. Oh, this okay. is the single barrel select. Now they are probably going to taste a little bit different. I mean, just because they're single barrels. Um, but these are not the barrel proofs. I could not find the barrel proofs for the life of me. I mean, it's very sad to say I really have never bought a bottle of Jack Daniels or searched for it. So maybe we'll put that on the list. We'll see if we can find us a barrel proof somewhere. Yep. I have this at the bar, just never tried it. Right. And that's so that's the coolest thing as well. Like you guys are saying, you guys can't get a barrel proof, but behind my head, I've got eight separate Jack Daniels barrel proofs. So, see, this I, I kid you not, this was my first ever Jack Daniels purchase. I've never mm. bought a bottle of Jack Daniels, and here's the reason why. Um, it's Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, it's Tennessee. Of course. It's, of course. It's, it's, it's UK, Tennessee. It's the whole rivalry. It's the whole thing. I had someone come over to my house one time. I said, what do you want to drink? He said, I'll have a Jack and Coke. I said, no, you won't. He said, that's, I'll have a bourbon an and Coke. He goes, I'll have a bourbon and Coke. I said, that I can do. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really have nothing against Jack. It's just never been on my radar because you know how I am about whiskeys and bourbons outside of Kentucky. Like, Jess, I don't know that you've heard of it, but it's Frey Ranch. It's out of Nevada. Yeah. Yeah, I have yeah, been familiar. on that one so much lately. Like I'm hmm. telling my husband, we're planning a trip there. I want to yeah. go to the ranch. So I'm all about things outside of Kentucky. I just, Jack Daniels has never been on my radar, but a lot of that is me and like the OGs. I like makers. I'm never going to chase makers. Right. Yeah. Hmm. There's a lot more out okay. there. Yep. Oh, of, of course. It just depends on what uh, flavor mash bill actually matches your palate as well. Yeah. Like, you know, some people like me, I froth a good rye. Like, give me, I don't know, actually, well, a good. Okay, oh. you, 
break that down and speak it again in in in, in American. Froth a good rye. Oh yeah, sorry. Like I rate a good rye. Is that I don't know how. Uh, if I actually grab a rye from behind me, ah, here we go. Uh, award-winning rye. So here is you guys wouldn't have seen this before. That was your very first TikTok. It was funny enough. See, so there we got my only TikTok, my very first, <laughs> <and> <laughs> very first one. <laughs> Big so, a this is an Australian rye coming out of Sydney. Um, it just won gold at the 2020 San Francisco Spirits Competition for the world's best rye. Nice. Okay. Um, and they have not been able to keep this puppy on the shelf yeah. uh, just because of, like, the sheer volume of people chasing it now. Yeah, that's what happens here. We, we tell mm. people, look, if you, once your bourbon or whiskey wins something big at World that's Spirits fun. Fest, you run out there and grab it right away because you're never going to find it again. That's I'm 100%. a drinker, so yeah. that's exciting, though. McK McKenna Tenure did that to me, and oh, it, it, I think I have, I have a bottle up there and a couple more somewhere. The, so the fun part for me with McKenna Ten is I now chase McKenna Ten O Eight. Everybody else is picking up O Nines and Tens and everything else. Mm. O Eight was the award-winning year, so ah, oh, that's okay. my hunt. That's my hunt. Is is the O Eights? I will turn down a nine or a ten just to find an eight. That that's is cool. My, that's my snobbery right there. But, <laughs> so, so you're a big, you're a big Jack fan. I mean, I know Jack from Reputation, from Black Label, Tennessee Whiskey, Biker Patches, um, yep. Lynchburg, Tennessee, um, mm. Dry County. A good country song. Yeah, oh. a million country songs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us what you know about Jack, um, and then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'd like to say Jack was my first drinking experience, uh, but I'd like to take you guys straight to what I was first drinking. So you guys would have never seen this bottle ever. Oh, wow. So this is a Australian-only release of the Jack Daniels. It's called Jack Daniels 107. It's bottled at 37%. So... I don't, I'm not very good with math, but whatever that is in proof. So under just over 70 something percent, 76. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, so yeah, they do that for Australian release, obviously like the cheapest Jack Daniels product in the market for here. Uh, this is what I was drinking when I was 18 to so legally able to drink in Australia. Um, and then it kind of progressed from there. Like our, uh, it, I guess Australia is what built Jack Daniels on the international playing field as well, just with our large thirst for American whiskey being Jack Daniels being our first product we're able to get here. or One right. of the very few products we saw um, outside of the craft distillers. Yeah, thank you for that That's 74 cool. in the comments. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. As I said, not good with math. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so that that's what it means to me, I guess. Um, I was actually, I was lucky enough to travel to the U S in 2018, visiting Jack Daniels distillery, able to pick up a couple of bottles and mule them back to Australia for me to, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's, it is hundred percent of this. Yes, it is. Well, I mean, but like taxes, I mean, if you want to get through customs, you, you just say it's a gift. Did you pay duty on it or anything like that? Oh, no. So, so in Australia, our import laws are, if we're traveling back from another country, we've got some like duty free laws. I'm sure they're the same everywhere. We've got 2.25 liters. I brought back a little over six. Nice. Yeah. So, that I was just like, hey, and they were like, yeah, no worries, mate. Just go through it. Yeah, no early hours yeah, of the afternoon. They'd be like, no. just give us the credit card. Oh, uh, uh, no, in Miami, <laughs> coming through customs, I bring back tequila. It's a gift up to a certain amount. I just got gifts for everybody. I, I just gift to myself. myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. Oh my gosh, well that's awesome. Well, um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's always been Jack Daniels was biker bar stuff. I mean, it was. Mm. Just, it, now I know they're trying to change their reputation. Yeah, who is it? Mila Kunis. That is that who they have as That's the... Jim Beam. Oh, wrong one. Whoops, swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. <laughs> see how I've been out of tune so, for the last. So let's month. see who is this. What has it got? Uh, Master Distiller, and it's got some scribbles. Um, who is over there? That's probably so, Jeff Arnett. It looks like a J and an A. There you go. See, 
Thank Actually, you. I've probably got a similar Jeff. There we go. Yeah, I've got a Jeff Arnett pick as well. Yeah. Well, good so, deal. All right. Well, that's good. We, oh, we both, perfect. I, apparently, that's a good pick, right? Because I have no idea. I have no idea either. But he's been doing it for long enough. You think he'd know what he's doing. So One, one would think. One would think. Yep. So <laughs> our, our picks are obviously a little different. Uh, mine is actually a quarantine 2020 liquor bar. Oh, yeah. Look at that coming focus. That is beautiful. Oh, that is beautiful. Gorgeous. Nice bottle. I mean, they have really stepped it up with the bottle. Um, I mean, you it, have a very sleek bottle. I like that. And it's a 750, and it doesn't feel like a 750. I mean, it's it feels small. I mean, you look at when you look at like an OS. It's a lot wider though. It's definitely wider. But when you look at mm. those, it just feels. I guess it's kind of like the makers thing. You you squish the bottle down and it whatever. But um, they're definitely changing their image with it with the picks. Um, going a little bit more classy, getting away from just the black label stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah. Um, so so what's your what's your take? Um, I mean, I know the big controversy right now with Jack Daniels. Is it or is it not bourbon? So I would say yes, but technically speaking, no. So they do everything right. They're doing like your sour mash. They're running it through the distillation process. The only part it changes is when they're running it through that charcoal filter. Yep. Now, if you remove that, bottle it, uh, sorry, barrel it, bottle it, bourbon, done. Sell it every day. But they add that um, charcoal mellowing from the Lincoln, Lincoln County process, and mm -hmm. that's when it becomes something totally different. So slap a Tennessee whiskey sticker on it and brand it as something else. See, and it's interesting because Fred Minnick, he takes the opposite approach, and he mm -hmm. looks at it and says that in bourbon, bourbon law, I guess bourbon, there's bourbon law, I guess it would yeah, be. Yeah, bourbon law, yeah, so I'd, I'd write that. He says that as long as it's there, – there's nothing in between – the distillate coming off the still and going into the barrel. He said there's no regulation between the two. Mm. So that filtering, whether it's through a screen or something else, as mm. long as it goes into a charred new oak barrel, it's mm. so he says there's a gap mm. and Jack Daniels fills the gap with their Lincoln County process. Mm. And he maintains that it's bourbon. But for me, if Jack Daniels is producing bourbon, mm. even though with an alternative process, but they surrender the name, why do I want to call it? Why do I want to force on it what they don't want? Right? Yeah. So that's kind of my take. Yeah. I mean, they built their entire brain around being a Tennessee, Tennessee whiskey. whiskey. That's their body, and that's okay. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. It's like, even if it is, they don't want it, fine. And it's not like they have a problem Honestly. with distribution. Oh, definitely not. No, they're not. It's not like they're selling like four cases a week out of the back of a van at your local Costco. Like they're, it's like 12 cases a week or something out the well, front of your local well, liquor barn. I think that's how it works. Crazy. Uh, I, I don't even know how many stills they're running, but it's got to be absolutely insane down there. Oh, uh, it, it um, is a crazy. If you guys ever get the opportunity to go down there and take a look, it is an incredible process. I yeah. want to go. We pass right by all the time going to Mississippi, and I just, it's always bad timing to go. Yeah. So, we'll, no, um, we'll, I'll oh, go ahead. Veer in. Oh, no, I'd say the car would just be veering in. I don't know. Like the car would just drive itself. It's just like, we're going here. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Smell, smell, it, next time. smell it turn. Um, well, <laughs> from what I understand, it's like they have the tour that you go on and you can see all the cool stuff. And then, yep. but their whole manufacturing side is, a, is an entirely different animal. Um, it's almost like, oh, look, we have this nice still that's cute and you can see it. But then for their for what they're actually doing, it's like a whole lot bigger. Is, is that correct? Mm -hmm. or am, I, am I off on that? No, no, no. You're you're about right. Um, so we're able to go through basically the whole facility. So I'm not sure on the tour we did, but it was the one with lunch included. So they took us out on the bus and took us to Miss Mary Bobo's for lunch. Like that was mm -hmm. top notch. It was around Christmas time too, so they had like the full Christmas spread on. Oh, amazing. Take me back. But uh, I'm just trying to remember like play-by-play play how we went through the distillery. Um, I believe they were running it at the time, so it must be some level of production going on there, be it um, say their single barrel um, run or because obviously you have to do different runs for different places right. as well. So um, I think they were doing an international run at that stage. So, yeah, I 
everything was operational when we went through. It wasn't like just everything was turned off and it was all just looking pretty and someone was polishing it all morning. Like, right, it's right. a pretty legit operation. Yeah, they 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 bang it out. There's no doubt. There, I think they're what the oh, yeah. the the largest American distillery in the world. I think that's, mm-hmm. I think that's the, their title. Um, so whether yeah. it's bourbon or not, they're killing it. So let man, let's, oh, yeah. let's let's do a pour. Let's. Oh, my bottle didn't pop. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. There we go. That was a solid pop. That's incredible. I mean, like four years. Oh, there yeah. you go. Now these are neck pours. It's a brand new bottle. Thank you. So you will actually notice something different about my bottle. Let me try and get that front on. You're dealing with 47%. Yep. Mine is 45 over 700. Gotcha. Oh, that's right. So you guys got a smaller bottle. Okay. We've got, we're losing 50 mils, super jealous, and we lose 2%. But, eh, the, the price we pay. Yeah, they, they take it out on you. Mm. That's hot. It's hot on the nose. Mm. Jess is liking it. I love it. Like, I drink this stuff every day. It's a little bit, so to put it in perspective for you guys, it's a little bit more expensive for me than Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare secondary, Eagle Rare retail. So, retail. so my retail for Eagle Rare is 80 bucks. I bought a bottle yesterday that is right next to my foot. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm going away for a couple of days, so I was like, why not take a bottle of Eagle Rare with me? Yeah, well, um, yeah. So yeah, eighty bucks. Uh, the Jack Daniels averages out at about a hundred odd a bottle. Yeah. So it's definitely not awful. But yeah, I think like, I think this one for me was fifty five, um, and then the Eagle Rare re- retail is like thirty five bucks. Yeah. For, okay. For Eagle Rare. Um, so it's not too bad. It's it's within yeah. the same ballpark. Definitely. So you like. Just whiskey nose, man. That's yeah. I'd say with mine, I'm definitely getting this big uh, banana note on there, like your typical um, Jack Daniel's nose you'll find from like bottle to bottle, um, like lolly bananas. I don't know if the discussion actually came up last night when I was talking to my grandparents and they actually bought me a bag because I was talking about it on my 1792 bottled in bond pick. Um, and yeah, I was just explaining these uh, banana lollies to them. I'm like, that's what I'm getting. Nice. It does have. I can see that banana smell, mm-hmm. but like, um, but not like you said, like an artificial banana smell. Um, yeah, yeah. Not like a not like a plantains or or something like that, but almost like the difference between artificial cherries and, and bubblegum yeah. cherries or whatever else. Yeah. Um, it it does have that brighter, sweeter note. So the the artificial banana nose you're getting actually comes from a banana that was in circulation before it became extinct. That's what that scent is. That's what they base all the artificial banana noses off. So that's why it doesn't taste like bananas. That's 100%. There we go. Just learned something new. That's going to show up in the show. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. You just drop that out like it's your own. It's fine. I don't mind. No, no. The first time I have to quote you, the second time I'll say some guy says, and then the third time it's as I always say. So <laughs> that's, that's the rule. I appreciate that. That's the rule. So you get quoted the first time. After that, you're on your own. Oh, Sorry. My. That's that's fun. I get that. I get that. I tell you what, man. For for forty seven percent, it's proof mm. on the nose. It, mm. It's ethanol forward. Like it doesn't completely. It's like not a lingering burn. Right. It's there. Yeah, it's definitely there. Mm. So the coolest thing about Jack Daniels is how they um, Mm. like age their barrels for the barrel picks Mm. and they also disclose their mash bill for them. So you kind of know exactly what you're getting walking into it. It's like, okay, I'm going to get my barrel and it's at the highest point of the warehouse and it's there for anywhere between eight to 10 years. But the master distiller is just going through and going, okay, cool. This one's good. This one's not good. Let's leave for a little bit longer or let's, let's pull it. So nice. Well, KN says that, that Jack Daniels uses younger barrels that give off that banana nose. So oh. Interesting so. oh, we dropped. Okay, there you go. I got uh, I'll see if I have – I don't even have an age state. Yeah, not a large state. Number. 
But I still love that they are transparent about that, like you were just talking mm. about. I mean, it's telling you the writ number, barrel number, all those things right on the bottle. So I heard you can actually go to the distillery and ask them for like a full printout of like where your barrel sits in the warehouse and um, like the actual map of the whole grounds. And it's like, you know, this is how long it sat here for and like the angle of sunlight, how quickly it's aged and everything else. I was like, that is mad the amount of time they actually put into developing that for the customers and then putting it out to you if you request it i tell you what okay so i owe jack daniels an apology i really do you a fan because i like that banana there's nothing I appreciate wrong with that. that there's nothing wrong with that at all no it so it, it smells very much ethanol forward mm. uh, at least this one i can get a little bit of the hints of the banana on the nose Mm -hmm. well, once I taste it, that ethanol, it doesn't drink hot, but it's, I get a little bit of that smoothness. It drinks nice mouthfeel. And mm -hmm. then that kind of banana in, uh, that, like you said, that, that fake banana pudding type banana yeah. kind of yeah. comes back up the back of my throat. And, and it's real. So I can't say I'm not Damn a it. fan. Now I have to buy. Are you a Jack, big fan? I have, I mean, I, enough that I'm going to have to buy Jack, Jack Daniels now. The coolest thing is that this is this is sitting on the shelf. Like people aren't going in and like, I need to get that Jack Daniels pick. Like yeah, we need to end the broadcast now because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we're gonna ruin it. Out. I feel like right. this has a heavy char flavoring that that I don't know like bodes well with the banana. Like I don't dislike it, but it's just heavy on the char to me. Once again, it's all about the the palate and how you perceive that. Right. Daggone it. We're normally pretty close. This Daggone one, I don't it. think we are. I'm, I'm having fun with this tonight. This is. Mm. I have avoided Jack Daniels out of pure rivalry sake for years. <laughs> and now That's I'm, so good. And no now, I'm, now I'm kicking myself because I'm like, all the Jack Daniels that I've passed up and I could have been drinking. Yep. Ah, it's sleeping nuts. on it. It's and so it was, it was all reputation. You know, it's yeah. oh, Jack. Blah. I mean, it's just whatever. It's almost like what Jim Beam had to go through and get out of there and Wild Turkey, where now they've yeah. hired Matthew McConaughey um, to come on board and, and to help them out to change that perception of who they are, what the brand mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. it's not just for for the Hells Angels and and taking shots at the bar and all that other kind of stuff, but it's actually really decent bourbon. Now the black label may, ver may very well be, but this is nice. I, it's so, really at all. There's two other personal recommendations between. So if you haven't tried the Sinatra select yet, obviously you haven't. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever make your way down to uh, the white rubber bottle shop that's on site, they're doing half size bottles. Um, I think we're paying two hundred and fifty dollars a bottle for the Sinatra Select here, but right. uh, half price is about sixty odd bucks. Your money, nice. um, and then there's also the single barrel rye as well, and that stuff is good juice. Nice. I'm really liking this. There is just I did not expect it to be sweet. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest eye opener for me is that it's so much sweetness in there. I expected much more astringent, much more leathers, um, mm. much more bitterness in it. And it's just all that perception of what- mm. It's uh, not bad at all, it's very smooth. Yeah, it really is. So Ralph says he's got Jack 27 on his bar and I snubbed it. Well, Ralph, you're in Ohio. I can get to your house faster than you can. Um, yep. <laughs> and I know where the key is. That's all I'm saying. There you go. <laughs> yeah, seriously. What? Uh, Jack twenty seven. I'm just trying to think. Um, oh, that's the gold. See, the gold's good. That's maple wood finish. Um, and that's I've probably got a bottle right next to my arm too. I like to keep all my my nice bottles within arm's reach in case I'm doing these and. Just reach out and okay. grab nice. Yeah, just, just reach out and grab it. Good for reference. I try and keep a good memory of where everything is, just in case I need to mm. feel thirsty. So, yeah, like final thoughts. I'm, I'm really interested to kind of 
There is nothing wrong with that at all, man. Nothing at all. That is just really. I wish that the nose matched the palate a little bit more for this on this bottle. Um, just I wish it would drop that ethanol on that nose just a bit. And maybe, maybe it's a neck pour, and that's what we're dealing with, and it just has to open up a little bit. But I mm. will come back to this thing again uh, mm. just to see what it does because I'm intrigued now. I find all my um, my single barrels are around the same. Obviously, you're going to have those slight variances between sure. barrel to barrel, but you're still going to find those underlying notes of obviously that toasted char, a little bit of smokiness there, that sweetness from like I think it's a high profile of corn in the mash bill, um, and then like a decent age statement on it as well. Like uh, for your for your money, you guys are killing it. Like say at maximum eight years old on like the very top. Yeah. Like cheap as chips. Maximum eight years, cheap side. Gosh, mostly we go four, six, and then jump eight and go straight to 10. Mm -hmm. um, who would be in an eight? It might eight, be a lot of Craig stuff. They, I mean, a lot of folks are dumping like the, are they're dumping eight and seven yeah, and, and calling right. it six. It runs between like the eight and yeah. nine year mark. That would probably be right. That would probably be closest. Buffalo Buffalo yeah. trade would be there, and that would be yeah. twenty six thirty dollars if you can yeah. find it now because it's everybody's yeah. buying it now. Yeah, anything yeah. coming out of Buffalo Trace is mm -hmm. like becoming highly allocated. I saw Ancient Age ninety limit one, one per, per bottle. I was like, you. Oh yes. yeah. Because what, here's what happened. Bottle that too. Here's what happened. Everybody came out and they said, "Oh, Pappy comes out of Buffalo Trace. Therefore, everything that comes out of Buffalo Trace is Pappy." And we're all like, "That's not true. That's not even a little." <laughs> and you know that I like, even though I should hide my face and I say it, benchmark. I know, I know, but it's my thing. Like, I have Go, all kinds you of just really. Gotta slum it, huh? I do. Well, I have so much good whiskey at my fingertips. But the thing is. After four or five pours, nobody's really differentiating oh, yeah. that yeah, much. Yeah. So at that point in time, if I'm just finishing up the night, continuing the buzz, I switch over. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. For, first drink of the night is, for me, is always a mid-ranger. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of something to get you started that you know pretty well. Second one is your good one for the night. Yeah. After that, it just goes downhill from there. Um, yeah. You probably go back to even on where you started. Mm -hmm. Fourth one. Forget it. You're done. And that's the thing. So I keep like fifths of benchmark in the cabinet because I have friends that come over and drink whiskey and at first drink anything you want. Yeah. But once you start getting to that point, switch it up. Yeah, we, we have, um, I've, I've got a COSOB selection, K-O-S-O-B. Um, keep out S-O-B. I'll let you fill, <laughs> fill in the rest. And that's, that's the, that's the selection that after you've had one, um, you see that? Ralph just said ancient age is sold out in Ohio. So Ralph, somebody told us to get that at the bar at Copper and Oak. They were like, yeah, you all should carry ancient age. And it took all I had to just hold a straight face and not giggle. And just tell them to F off. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I was like, ancient uh, age. Okay. Sure. Hmm. Yeah. And we could go grab that out of the toilet. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm sure it's great for like, cause it's 80 proof. So use it as like a cocktail base. Like I'm, I'm sure it'll hold up well. The, but, the problem is you use 80 proof in a cocktail around here on a bourbon cocktail and it's yeah. going to go back. But that's like how like it's though. So no, that's what we would do. So we're really big into like college sports here. Really yeah, big. a little bit. So college yeah. football is our thing. And we tell Gate if it's a 7 p.m. game. Yeah, I feel that. Begins, and I'm like, my big Yeti is like this much whiskey and then the rest ginger ale. And I'm yeah. benchmarking it all day because if I drink straight whiskey, I'm passed out by the time the game comes. Mm -hmm. Which Jeremy be carrying you home. Which yeah. which depending depending on the game, it's sometimes I, mean, I might want to some, be passed out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's too funny. Well, we um and people ask me and said, why did you start doing the tournament? And I said, Well, I knew Kentucky basketball wasn't going to be playing through March um because we had such a miserable season this year that I was like, this is the one year I'm ever going to be able to do a full 64 bottle <laughs> tournament like this. Uh, and do lives every night for an entire month. Um, yeah, because we don't have to yell go cats. Right, yeah, because we're done. I mean, we are 
done. We, we, we got beat out in the first round of our conference tournament. Oh. Okay. So Let's bad. give Jez our thoughts on this. I like it, yeah. Jez. Thank you very much, man. That's I like okay. It. I like it. I don't dislike it. That's and do you know that's fine as well. Definitely mix it up. So maybe even because it sounds like Jeremy's going to be buying bottle after bottle. So yeah, definitely. Just, it's fine. Like no, I would, it's absolutely something I would buy to keep on the shelf. Um, I just think the difference for me is, and he kind of mentioned that where the nose and the palate were a little bit different, which he yep. mentioned it in like the nose is a little hot, where the palate was a little sweeter. To yep. me, the nose was a little ethanol forward and, and it was a bit hot, but yep. it just tasted almost too heavily charred for me okay so it was good but i don't think it, it's not something that i would go to very often maybe yeah. the fire i won't know the difference i like the nose on this note there I've, we go I've, and I've, also the first net pour maybe it was I've, better down I've, here i've acclimated now is it better like i really did have the first pour the banana is very strong in yeah. this. And that's the thing, though. So, like, when I started tasting it mid palate, it hit like a very heavy char, and then the banana would finish, and mm. and it just didn't like phase into it very well for oh. me. Oh, no. So, you want that on the flip, right? So, you want like a like a banana first, and then like that char yeah. on the finish, just to give it like a really smooth, yes. kind of toasted oak. Yeah. 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 I that's feel that. I like it when like the layers all complement one another. Mm. And I felt like they yeah. were drastic to me. Yeah, and it, I got and that. it probably was because it was a neck pour, very fresh yep. crack, and and let this open up some. Of course, we're acclimated a little bit now. See, I'm telling you, it's there. I'm not going to sleep on it. I don't think it's bad by any means. And you, this is honestly one of the whiskeys that I've gotten so much of that banana nose yeah. and like just forward that way. It, it hits every once in a while, but I don't catch that note often. Yeah, I... Brown Foreman. You poured this for you, and I'm drinking it. Yeah, Brown Foreman is probably the other one. Brown Foreman's probably the other one that has has the banana notes in it. Um, mm. For me, Old Forester 1920. Um, yeah. Right I here. always say that if I had to pick five whiskeys, and that was all I could drink the rest of my life, Old Forester 1920. Always it. in here. Um, we'll be tasting this in a bit. Uh, this one typically for me starts off very apricotty and then finishes with that banana. I love um, it. And so that's a fun one for me. So we've actually got um, in our lineup tonight. Um, this is where if you can oh, see peg it, leg? the mm -hmm. peg leg porker. This is their oh. young. Um, the coolest part about this man and Jez, when you get here and whenever the world opens up, um, 100%. I'm going to take you down and I will introduce you to the original peg leg. Um, he appreciate that. He, well, you know the story behind it, right? No, I don't. I'm not. Uh, see, I wasn't familiar with peg leg porker until I actually like jumped on Instagram because that brand isn't like, as I said earlier, like these brands, we've only got like four to five brands that are actually heavy in Australia between like Wild Turkey, Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, um, say Heaven Hill, and that's on occasion if we can get the uh Bernheim, um. Obviously, Maker's Mark falling under Jim Beam. Uh, that's probably about it, actually. Like, it, it's very – oh, and Buffalo Trace that's, like, heavily accessible. So this is actually coming out of Heaven Hill. One of my absolute favorites yeah. this oh, year. Oh, the Tested Barrel? Well, no, this no, is the Elijah proof. Craig Barrel Proof. There oh. was a from last year. This is the B520. And I've had batch A, B, and C. And in my head, this here is one of the best whiskeys. That – that, like that barrel right there. This specific one. I was in Mississippi and they yeah. had like nine of them on the shelf in this little podunk town and nobody knew what they were. I was like, give me all of the all whiskey. Of do you yeah. know what? No, do you know what would be fun? I've got a B5 uh 17 here from 2017. Did you want to move on? You want to get really good? Yeah, Let's that's what I'm it. talking about. <laughs> do you know, because like we we're only expecting to do one bottle, but it's incredible because i did a um so there's so it's not just me that's loving bourbon in australia i know it's going to be hard to believe but um there's a small group in australia it's like 150 odd members we did this um break even bottle and uh yeah we're able to just all go i guess whatever that breaks up into like two ounce Oh, I think they're ounce pours actually. So ounce pours, 
and then they were just shipped across Australia. So this is my first time trying it, so this will be fun as well. Okay. I'm resetting my nose. Yeah. I've got like I was kicking back on the lounge just waiting for this to kick off. I was like an hour late. I was like, oh yeah, it should be about eleven because I was like trying to do the times in my head. I was home luckily, and I had like everything basically ready to go. And then it was like, yeah, we're doing it in two minutes. I'm like, okay, we're gonna get this done. <laughs> well, I was like, I got a couple of glasses there. Like you're we're like, good. We're good to go. An hour, right? So an hour, and I'm like, it's two minutes, and you're like, and we looked at each other and said, well. If we have to do our bourbon tournament first, then we'll do that, and we'll just go and bring Jesse in an hour. But, that's uh, that's fine. Like I'm just like extremely time poor, just trying to manage my whole life. It's it's oh, fine. nothing wrong with that. Came to my house today, and I was like, "You pulled a Lahana because I'm always late to everything. It's it's horrible." <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's just obviously something to Jeremy's having comments. It's fine. <laughs> oh my god. I love the nose on this. Uh, it's three hundred and eighty nine dollars a bottle in Australia for me to yeah I know bend over right. Oh. Do you want to know how much? You no, might not want to know how much I paid. No, tell me. Like I, I, I found it very. I paid like sixty dollars for mine. Sixty five here. That's, and I like I understand that we pay eighty dollars per one liter of a hundred percent alcohol here as tax. Ah, uh, sorry, as. Uh, like an import tax, and then we pay 10% GST and then 5% duty. I think that's how they break that down. Okay. Um, so that's why, and then, like, obviously, everyone's got to get a cut. The, you know, everyone's got kids to feed. So, mm-hmm. um, oh, cheers, Nick. I just saw that comment drop in. Is he one of, is he one of yours? Yeah, he's, he's one of mine. Um, he is Aperture by Volume. Um, he actually recently just turned off his Instagram Um you know, mental health and everything else. So just checking in on him, making sure he's doing okay. So I appreciate him jumping on because nice. And yeah. that I, I was actually able to get the the A one twenty. Yeah, the Todd um, talks about. But it. I have ah. not, I have not cracked mine. So yet. I've had it, and and like if I'm rating, oh no, he has the twenty one. Twenty one. That's just kidding. Year. I'm thinking back to last year because rating them last year, that one was like my oh. second place. That C was an absolute third. It was way too hot for me, and it was like 136.6. And this is right. drinking. This hot. is drinking way hotter than. Mm. Really? I well, I mean, the it. proof. Yeah, the proof is like. It's 127.2. Yeah. What am I playing with? I'm playing with 124.2. So. That to me, is a near perfect bourbon. Yeah. It really is. See, I'm not. I have a huge issue with small batch. I'm not a fan of them. I don't like them. Um, I don't. I've only found one small batch I like, and that's the um, Homestead from Mictus. I don't even see that up there. I was trying. To small see. batch is difficult because of its ex- of its exclusivity. Um, where, I mean, that's a the the Jack was a was a barrel for or um it's single barrel. Epic, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was one of the things that, that was difficult when I was even putting together the tournament and it really came down to, um, what do I have on my bar and what can we use? Um, Mm. but it's difficult because there are so few of these in circulation that, you know, you're not getting widespread distribution with these things. Yeah. And there's so few people that actually have availability for it because it just goes so fast and then they're hitting secondary market nowadays nearly as fast as they as they hit the stores um yeah it's ridiculous we'll watch like the day a121 released here um i went i was in lexington managed to just slip by a liquor bar and grab one um and then by the time i got to my house about an hour or two later they were already showing up on secondary for oh, yeah. o- well over double it's insane that's crazy oh i love how intense your secondary market is like as i said there's a good like 300 bourbon drinkers in Australia that absolutely chase certain bottles. So we're extremely mm-hmm. lucky. Like we've got a good allocation of Eagle Rare. Our Blantons have still slowed down because some Americans have decided that they want to get the, yeah, the 101 and I and the, blame uh, like uh, water to me. completely missing out in Australia. Yeah. Blanton's just drinks really? like water to me. Okay. Okay. I, mean, I get it's that. All right. I think it's solid, but it's nothing I'm ever going to chase. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I 
I get that. Like it's since we've got well, no, you guys want the Blanton's Green label. That's what you guys froth, even though that's our seventy-five dollar bottle. Yeah, because you guys want to complete the collection. So I'm like, that's, that's I get what they're that. That's what it is. It's, it's no longer yeah. just about Blanton's. It's what can't I get? And yeah. now, and it, it's a it was gold, but now gold's showing up here. Um, and so we're finding I, that popping up. And like you said, now green is showing up. Um, and that's the, that's the new, um, that's the new target. So you guys, so we've got the, um, green allocation. I don't know if it's just for Australia or if it's international. Um, and I agree with Nick Blenton's is definitely hit or miss. Like yeah. Yeah. it, it depends on like barrel to barrel as well. Um, yeah, the green, see, we had a good abundance here in Australia, about, as I said, $75 odd. Um, and then, you know, obviously people are clearing out the shelves and then sending it to family overseas uh, where it's now showing up in the international markets and yeah. you guys are like posting it on socials and everything else and everyone's like, oh, my God, got to have it. Let's get it. And then it's just obliterated our Blanton's market totally. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Ralph said he's got gold and a green, um, but no red or oh. red. So I've got a straight from a barrel and I've got gold behind me. I'm not like heavily chasing it because there's obviously better barrels, uh, sorry, better bottles to buy. Yeah. Um, and then supporting like my uh, my mate, Whiskey Hunt Australia with all his picks that he does. So, yeah. Yeah. The hard part for me with, I mean, because we had it, we I've got it in the tournament. Mm -hmm. It made it out of the first round, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it was against, um, what was it against? Oh, it was against Hancock's Reserve. Um, I'm not a Hancock's. I mean, but it also is like super low proof. That's water. It's right. like 86 right. percent. It, it was. It was so. It was a struggle for me because mm. the people that were with it um, were were higher in proof, and and I had to actually move instead of just tasting them right side by side. Nice. Um, I had to switch them and taste the the Hancock's with the Blantons, and the Blantons beat it but only by like a point. Mm. It was so close and it was really, I think it was just about the proof point. Mm. Um, and, it, you know, I, I refer to it as the holy hand grenade of Antioch, um, which is a reference of another generation. Um, I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if you catch that, that reference. No idea. But no I, I'm idea. very, I'm very familiar with the holy hand grenade. Like the whole, funny enough, the holy hand grenade reminds me of um, Duke Nukem. For some reason, but that's probably yeah. an entirely different reference. So the whole they're pulling Holy Hand Grenade from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There you go. See, I don't so remember watching. Wait, so Holy Grail. Really no, I have seen. I I think I'm halfway through because I watched it so many times as well. Like Holy Grail is hilarious. So you, you remember the. Um, Thou shalt count by pin, and thou shalt count it to three. That it it's a ball with the cross on the top, and it looks like a bottle of Blanton's. Mm. Um, mm. For me, it's always the the holy hand grenade of Antioch, which Ralph understands it. He gets it because there you go. Todd gets it as well. Monty Python. There we go. I've got some. I've got some kindred spirits in. in, in yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's that's fine. Like I've seen, I've seen the Holy Grail. That's the only Monty Python I've actually seen. So it's if that makes you good. feel any better, I just don't remember the reference. Nick's following. We got a follower. All right, Nick. Glad to have you, man. Glad to have you. We are. He, we, we he said y'all are fun. He meant you and your eighteen personalities. Yeah, well, you're. You got the other twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were, you were here we go. Here we there go. Let's go. gotten this script. Thou shalt not count to two, neither thou count thou to two, except proceeding thou to three. Five is right out. <laughs> That's it right there. That's brilliant. I absolutely love it. Thank you, Todd. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you for giving us that site, Nick. You seen that? Musthavemalts.com. It's a great site for international release whiskey. I just got the Four Roses that comes out of Japan the other day. Nice. There you go. See, and then now you can get the blends black as well. You're going to have to pay like two arms and one That's of your toes. But heavy secondary no market. And the thing is, I'm good to pay like like a 30%, 40 maybe a 40% markup. But you want me to sell my freaking kidney? Like, let's go. No, nope. nope. no, no worth it. 
we call those taters. I don't know what yeah. you call them down there, but they're taters here. Um, yeah. And the best one, Fred Minnick did a video on it, and it had somebody actually dressed up in a potato costume. <laughs> and it was hilarious. And, and they're standing there, and they go, yeah, I just got in the bourbon, and I really like Blanton's. Oh, my God. And yes. I was wondering if you knew where I could get some Blanton's and what would be a good price for my ends? And it was just like, that, I mean, all uh, right. And then I kid you not, I screen capped a, a post <laughs> in one of the groups, and it was, they didn't mean to be quoting that clip, but they were yeah. quoting the clip. And I, I sent it to Rob, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. And he goes, Tater's going to take. I mean, <laughs> just, that's amazing. It, and what was funny, I don't give, I mean, Yes, I give opinions on the tournament because it's obvious mm. to take things in there. Do you have any blends? I can follow <laughs> me right now. <laughs> and, um, it's the best. It, and it's, it's funny because um, I don't give opinions on what not to buy and what to buy during the tournament. Mm. But it was the one where I held up the bottle of blends and it was like, look, if you can find it on retail, you need it for your shelf, fine, get it. Mm. But don't be paying secondary goofy prices for this stuff because it's just not worth it. It's just Definitely not. not. It's just not a way. There's so much better juice out there. I mean, oh, are you kidding me? I would literally buy this five times over before I bought a Blanton's now. Yeah. And, and this this I can find in five different stores with no problem whatsoever. And nobody's paying secondary for this. No. That's why I like – so I'm a huge backer of the underdog, and Jack Daniels for, like, the international market is a huge underdog. Like, Which everyone's really sleeping cool. on it, and, like, especially with the rye release as well, as we were talking about earlier. Like, they're sitting on the shelves, and it's, like, eight-year-old rye. At under a hundred. I don't know what you guys are paying. I pay $110 here on average, anywhere between 120 to 110 a bottle. Yeah. So if you guys are picking it up, like, cheap, mate. You're killing it. And that's all we're doing. I mean, and and I will. I, like, I'm, I'm about to polish off my full bottle of Blanton's. It's got, like, a third left. If I find yeah. it at retail, I'll snag it. Just to replace it. I bought it yeah. any time I find it at retail, but right. I'm never yeah. going to pay. Like, I want to say my absolute maximum I'll pay for just a regular is, like, 70 bucks. Like, I won't yeah. pay anything. Oh, more. yeah. that That's it. It's not just, happening. It's just not... Oh, Ralph says, Ralph, Ralph says, Wilderness Trail, six-year weeded over oh. every single day. All day long. A hundred percent. All day See, long. See, I can't I can't get that. So I was like, what's WT? I was like, wild turkey, what? Oh, no, no, okay. No, Wilderness no, Trail. No, All right, no, I'm no, feeling no, you. No, I got ya. So there was like I, their stock just turned seven years old last fall. Uh, um so we're looking at an eight year release, maybe sometime this fall. Um yeah. and, and we of course oh Pat just liked it. Oh Pat's in his Pat's in the house. Pat, who's Pat? Pat? Pat is here. Who's Pat? I just saw a light. Pat Heist, Dr. Pat Heist. He is um, he's the master distiller and owner, well, co-owner of Wilderness Trail oh, Distillery. Oh, oh. Um, my man. man. On our oh, yeah. Blaine Karen's tonight. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you we got some. Out. Yep. We were, there we you were go. How bonkers. good is that? Pat is the man. He's Glen Karen sent him a customized Glen Karen glass. Oh, that had Slayer that on said it. Slayer on he it. It had the Slayer that. logo because Pat's incredible. Is, Pat's a rock star. He was a rock star became before he became uh, a uh, what molecular biological engineer. Oh, I don't know. Some biologist. Science, some science crazy. crazy. They call him doctor and stuff. I we really think it's funny when people say, "Oh yes, Doctor Pat Heist," and we're going. Well, I mean, yeah. that's until you get in a conversation with him and five seconds in, you realize how in over your head you are because he's a genius. Yes, there's Pat waiting up. Yeah, I know, Pat. I've been. Uh, I, yeah. uh, what a legend. He's got my he's got some barrel char for me that I'm going to be smoking some um, some barbecue with. Um, <laughs> yeah, see, I'm spoiled rotten, Jez. Spoiled rotten. Are you the bourbon? Person? You are doing well. Oh my gosh. Hey Pat, this is Jez. He's Whiskey Fi from I don't know, someplace in Australia, east coast of Australia, uh, New South Wales, right? Yeah, that's it. Sydney, yeah. Australia. All right, 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 right. Awesome. Now you're not actually in Sydney, you're outside of Sydney though, right? Yeah, so I'm like a small town, but everyone knows where Sydney is, so 
it's like, hey, that I'm like there, but not there. It's fine. It all makes that's sense. What, that's what we do with Lexington. We're just yeah. outside of Lexington, but people can actually find it on the map. Surprise, he's still speaking to me. That's hilarious. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, the and it's bad because the Willis Trail six-year ride did not make it out of the first round. The four-year we did, the six-year ride did not. And I was, I was, I don't, I'm sorry. So the other day, Brian, go on. No, you're right. No, no, no you're right. You're right. Please. I'll, I'm well, being rude. As been normal. It's fine. As a pick. Somebody was here and they were like, you really like Wilderness Trail Distillery. You have all these bottles. But like behind us, I actually have like double that, but those are all specific barrel picks, which is why they're up on the shelf. Yeah. Like yeah. there. I've I've got seven or eight bottles. Two I've got the original, the the very first original four year weeded release mm -hmm. in the box, which shall never be drank. Um, mm -hmm. and then I have the six year weeded in the box, which shall also never be drank. I have a drank. couple boxes over there of that. And then I've got um the my um my bourbon steward bot bottle. Yeah, no, I bought two of those. Yep, um, and then I've got the 21C barrel pick. Yeah, so we're we're fairly well stocked with um, stiff competition, so we accept defeat with pride. Yeah, Pat, it was it was it was against some big dogs. It really was that night, and and I hate it. Um, I always like to see the hometown guys do well. You're still in with the weeded, um, but I'm telling you, the blinds don't lie, and it was really tough. It was really tough. But, That's the thing. If it's if it's good juice and it's flying off his shelf, like he's not complaining. His kids are getting fed, so yeah, yeah, you know, yep. And he's and they're kicking it, man. They they've got what Pat, you've got thirteen twenty five thousand barrel Rick houses going up across the street from you guys. Um, I think it's thirteen more in the next couple of years. That's um, incredible, Pat. What's your production right now? How many barrels are you guys at for production? Um, I remember when they were like one barrel a month or something like that. It was crazy. Yeah, I, I was listening to a podcast that he jumped onto and he was talking about his yeast strains and I was like, this man oh. is absolutely incredible he, with like he, just he, so many different kinds. I was like, I didn't even know. Like, I know they use yeast in Vegemite here and I was like, Vegemite is disgusting, but that's about it. I was like, thank you. Oh, salty, like, salty and dark and that. Well, no. the wife would argue that you guys are using it wrong, and I'm like, you were disgusting. I'm gonna lock you outside because that yeah. is the worst thing ever. As a, as you said earlier, I'm American by heart. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> this really, this bourbon doesn't drink itself. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, using Vegemite wrong, meaning opening it and putting it on bread, right? I'm I just mean, like, yeet it. It's gone <laughs> straight out the window. It's it's this yeasty black tar looking, and they use it like peanut butter. Well, I, and, I've got some in the kitchen. I don't want to run and go get it. It's but if you need a good reference, I'll go get it. I'll I'll Google it. Oh, oh no no no, it's all right. Give me like two seconds, and I'll go get it. Oh my it's fine. God. I've never even heard of this stuff. You've never heard of Vegemite? It's literally in a song. Vegemite sandwich. Make me a Vegemite sandwich. You know, you have all these references, I don't understand. I can't help it. I'm a Gen Xer. You're millennial. I mean, never the twain shall our worlds meet. I know. It's Still fun. drinking the Ultra. Still drinking the Ultra. <laughs> so how do you guys really feel oh, about now it? The <laughs> now I'm going to have to sit down in like, oh, whenever, you actually, whenever we finish this and like, listen to what shit you guys talked about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So you got to do a tasting of the veg. Oh, there it is. No, it's – I'll throw up. It's absolutely <laughs> disgusting. I can't think of anything worse. Oh, it's too funny. Oh. It is and it worked. awful. Thank you. I, I had to sing a little bit of the song um, that contained the word, the Vegemite sandwich in it. She is oh. – Yeah, men at work, uh, Len Down Under. Right, yeah. finally. Just younger than me. I come from Len Down here. Under. Yeah. Now, I mean, how do you – like – we were brought up on that song, like between Mr. Brightside and Land Down Under, like we don't have any other songs. <laughs> That's your national That's anthem. I'm yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you got to remember, I'm a Gen Xer. I'm 45. So, you know, I've got to, I remember that song when it was, when it was kicking the first time around. Um, wow. Okay. And, and so when they sing Vegemite Sandwich, we're, we were all, I mean, as 10 year olds, we're looking at each other going, I don't know what that is. It's like, what's a okay. Vegemite sandwich? Oh, open the lid. I want to see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, I don't know. I spent, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It looks like what? black peanut butter. And you put that like on your sandwiches? Oh, like I'll bring that in a friend. That's awful. Yeah, uh, they like it's like tar. It, yeah, it's not good. Um, I'm gonna like lock that sucker up before I spew. Um, you gotta that's, take it away. I'll I'll do it. Like, it's content, so it, it counts. But <laughs> it's like like Nick wants to do it. <laughs> That's awful. That sorry, I should have told you guys before I was gonna do it. So you don't take a sip. Um, that it's it's like bread. So if you imagine bread and it's like freshly baked, obviously those yeast aspects, but it's like disgusting. I wouldn't even say it's moldy. I would I'd take another sniff to get some good notes for you, but that is the worst thing I've ever smelled. Um, I'd like to say like a black beer and like bread, disgusting oh. bread, black beer. That's, That's awesome. a no from me. Yeah, no, no. So if you're looking for a good application of Vegemite, you do like a light spread. Right. I don't, I don't know what that. Is. Sorry, no, I'm not going <laughs> to eat some, Nick. That's messed up. That. Like the stuff but the Nickelodeon Nick. Hawaiian Rocket Power Kids, like Otto and all of them, I used to love that show. I, was, I don't know what that is. What's the Nickelodeon oh. Hawaiian Rocket Power? I, that's it was yeah. Show Maybe I'm showing my age. Like seven or eight. That sounds like a Capri Sun. And his name, flavor. like the, the lead character is named Otto. It's like an animated show, and he had like purple hair. No, no idea. Um, like, I grew up in the hood. Like I don't, we didn't, we barely even had a TV. I don't know. Oh, I he grew up in the hood. People. He grew up in the hood, right, right, and like sheep running around the backyard. Oh, yeah. And, and kangaroos or something. Right, and kangaroos to school. You know how it goes. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Most Americans, that's it. Sydney Opera House and kangaroos and crocodile, crocodile Dundee and a big crocodile night. Dundee, and we're all eating Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> we're just knocking out all the stereotypes tonight. Okay, man. Nick. So your thoughts on the Elijah Craig Bear Proof? Yeah, I'd love to hear Nick's thoughts. No, God, I meant just. I'm reading Nick's name. Oh, sorry. I was like, <laughs> you know, Nick I was like, that. Nick, tell us. Yeah, go on. Like, I, I, favorite from last year was like the A. A one eighty two. Ah, yeah, A one twenty. So mint jazz. Um, yeah. I just threw it on the ground. Um, lucky I've got a second second bottle. It's a wife's one. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I've got the B seventeen as I said, um, hundred and twenty four point two. Obviously, I drank it all really quickly, um, and then I choked on the last little bit. So if you guys watch it back, you can watch me choke on it. <laughs> um, the it, so really interesting flavor. Obviously, it was very heavy on the nose. I'm just gonna crack this one so I can get like a good because obviously, like I've smelled Vegemite since then. So all I'm like uh, imagining is a Vegemite. So. It's rather sweet on the nose. Obviously, we've got different barrels, so different batches, etc. But a right. um, little bit of spice. Obviously, that big heat kick at the end um, from the obviously the proof um, yeah. living over like sixty percent. So it's one twenty. Yeah, the one twenties. Because you guys like one twenty seven, so that's even yeah. higher. That's almost. Um, you guys are almost moving to hazmat cas at territory this thing is in stag territory at 127 I mean, yeah this is stag junior territory right here um i've got a bottle of stag junior as well oh that thing if you if if you like chewing on 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 whiskey soaked sawdust oh that's, that's stag junior right there amazing yeah i that's um i was able to try actually i was able to pick up a bottle of rhetoric 25 when i was at um bullet for the first time in 2018 yeah. um and that is like a wooden fence paling that's just been out in the, the sun for 25 years and like whiskey soaked amazingness but it's obviously not for everyone yeah we definitely got we got to do this more often jess yeah 100 well, percent. and nick says we're hilarious at so like it's fun and if i was able to drop a couple of f-bombs i'm sure i'd be like 40 times more hilarious oh my gosh Facts. what we'll do yeah. is we'll, we'll have to get together and pre-game a little bit and actually come back in and do a do a real deal that is amazing we've been on an hour and a half i think our i think our tournament we're just an gonna hour. Delay the tournament run tonight um it's like we're an hour and four minutes so i don't know yeah. 
Oh, it, 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 really, that's right. We did. We talked a little bit before, right at seven. Oh. Um, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because you were waiting for me because I was obviously didn't have my shit together. Yeah, yeah, you're running around eating Vegemite. That's oh, crackers, ew. Crackers. Can't think of anything worse. Oh, that's just I, I just can't I just can't even imagine what that would taste like. But nope. nope yeah, nope. no. I'll when I'm able to make it back to Kentucky, I'll bring you down a tub. And you can oh, yeah. it. It'll that. bring you so much joy to like throw it out the window. <laughs> the wife will cry. It'll be funny. <laughs> we'll, we'll hand it out a Halloween. Kids can come by and pick it up. <laughs> Long time. Pat's not good. <laughs> there we go. We got Pat rolling now. That's awesome. He's the man with a plan. Let me tell you. What a legend. Love Dr. Pat. Dr. Pat. Oh, yeah. So what do you think? So what do you think we should keep going? I mean, what what, what do you have to taste down there? You, what do, what do we have behind you that we could that he might have down there? I don't know. Can you see? Let's see. I'm trying to see. Okay. Her bar is limited. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Like I've got a couple of bottles, so like I've I've got a good selection. I'm just trying to see. Oh, Ezra Seven. I don't know if you'd have that available to him. There's yeah, the Maker's, the, the wood finishing series. I don't know if you have that. You got any of yeah. the Maker's wood finishing stuff, or is that too new for you? No, that's super niche. They, I was asking the Maker's team, and they were like, no, can't get it in Australia. I was like, why? Like, surely they have enough. Kentucky Spirit. Are you, are do you, you have the wild turkey? Do you have the wild turkey Kentucky Spirit? I Here's one I prepared earlier. There we go. Grab that. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm gonna I, go. I think I'm barely reaching. <laughs> we are totally off the rails tonight. Yeah, like we've we've done more bottles than what I thought we we're gonna do. So oh, let's just yeah, keep yeah. going. Can we're we we're ready to go. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Let's see. We'll just keep killing. We'll keep killing. Checker bunker. Yeah, no kidding, right? Checker bunker. That one is. That's got bananas all on it. That residual nose is still hanging in that glass. All that bananas. Mm. Yeah, I might have to grab some water man. and wash out my glass. Give me two seconds. Yeah, go for it, man. <laughs> He's a checker bunker. I just love that. I remember my kid was like, "She has it under there and in there." <laughs> I was like, I was drinking last night or the night before and I used up all my uh, tasting glasses so I was like I do not have any spares left out here because you use a different tasting glass um, for the tournament I use the wide mouth blends um, and then I like drinking from from one of the narrow blends but you use a different one what, what one are you drinking at or do you normally so, drink so I normally drink out of these uh, Denver and Lily ones Denver yeah the Denver glass yeah yeah so well, that's my face, but you guys obviously couldn't see the logo on the bottom because it was just my face, but zoomed in. Um, yeah, so like they, uh, they're heavily represented in Australia. And I also see do US distribution as well, I think. Yeah, we, we can get them up here. I've seen them. Yeah. I mean, it's sporadic. I think the hard part is most folks here would do a, a rocks glass um, or a Glencairn, and then you start getting into a little bit more diversity. Um, yeah. just mostly with, um, the, the wide mouth blends. Um, and then, I mean, just shoot most of his, the, the lion's share is just normal blend carries and rock glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pop this. Up. Actually, I'll do it close to the mic. Oh, that was oh. disappointing. Why? <laughs> Sound like you left a cork in it. Yeah. I, this I probably haven't opened this bottle in like 10 years though. So. It's all decayed and rotting in it. Oh no, bottle 2019. So what's that, two years ago? Yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad. Gosh, 2019, two years ago. That seems like forever. After 2020, holy smokes. Mm. So that's you guys right. able. I still think of 30 years ago as 1970, by the way, just so you know, just frame of reference. Oh, okay. Yeah, geez. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Y yeah, I know, because 30 years ago was when I graduated high school. I wasn't born yet. This is I was school. nowhere near being born yet, so it's oh, fine. Yeah, go kiss my ass. 
I'm actually interested to see if you guys, so you guys can get these bottles. Oh yeah. 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 Because I saw that like, they, the they old ones. Give them out of, they give them out as like door prizes at McDonald's, oh, and yeah. and I mean, just yeah. walk into Kroger and they say, "Here, take this." When did we you have say yours was bottled? Uh, 2000, uh, what we got? Six months, 2019. Okay. Mine was January 14th, 2019. It's pretty close. There you go. So Ralph says try 1848, which I guess is when he was born. What, that says 19. 1968. Oh, 1968. 1968. Sorry. Sorry. What are you, how many of these have you had? <laughs> Ralph's awesome. He he is my he is our um, official bourbon procurement officer. Um, oh, yeah, it's a volunteer position. I've had to raise his salary four different times. Zero times zero yeah, is zero times zero. Is That's zero. the only math I can actually do. <laughs> oh gosh, I kept telling the wife she's going to get a raise for booking all my schedules, but uh, it still hasn't happened yet. That's too funny. Mm. You were in second grade, Ralph. Wow. In which year? Which year was 1968, maybe? 1968, yeah. My mom was born that year. Holy smokes. Zilch. Zilch. That's, that's oh, Ralph's that's salary. Yep, for sure. He rode his dinosaur to school, he told me. Did, did you walk to school uphill both ways? You know what? No you shoes? know what's funny? I lived in Maine for eight years. I lived in Maine for eight years. We had to, we didn't walk to school. I walked home from the from the school bus. It was over a mile. It was downhill, and yes, I guarantee you, we walked in the snow, and it was cold as. Balls. That's a no for me. Yeah, cold. no for me. I remember one time, really distinctly. Of course, we always dressed up anyways, and I had this big heavy jacket on, hood up, boots, gloves, the whole nine yards, right? We had this one big hill and we had to walk down in a huge field behind us. The wind was blowing so harshly and so cold with snow everywhere. We literally turned our backs and walked sideways for a half a mile down a hill just to keep the wind out of our faces. So didn't walk to school, but walked home from it and it was downhill. But good. So Lord. this wild turkey, I like Kentucky spirit single bear anyway, but yep. this one is 101 proof. And to me, it almost drinks like a little bit less than that. More how like Woodford comes in at like 94. Like this one's super yeah. smooth. There's no like real Kentucky hug or anything. Yeah. I'm a fan. It's nice and warm on the tongue when it when you first sip, which I like. It's got that honey feel. Um, and then it breaks into that like oaky. And then you have that pepperiness, that finish. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like super honey on the front of the tongue right. and then that's really all i'm getting i wasn't getting like a big spice kick not like not herbaceousness not like herbal spice just kind yeah. of that alcohol proofing that, that yeah i got you spice. living at like that 101 see in australia i'd argue that i probably prefer the 101 more because i can get that for about 56 to 60 something dollars a bottle compared to this i'm paying 120 bucks for well this is 125 what, this is 40 or 50. Uh, i want to say i paid no more than like 50 bucks for yeah that one. and you're right because yeah. the 101 here is like is is a 20 dollars it's like 20 22 dollars yeah yeah so for it's me, like i'm I'm probably better off buying one of those to enjoy it at the same proof. Yeah. But like that, that's always been my argument. That's why I've only got like a half bottle on the shelf and then a bottle just actually just above there. Yeah. So it's like, man, yeah. plenty of bottles of 101 for less price, same proof, same level of enjoyment. Cause you know, you know what you're drinking 101 for. So Right. And you're really very cool. rarely going to reach for because you've obviously got those extra tobacco notes, those uh, that sweet honey, um, obviously that little bit of rye prep, uh, not rye pepper, sorry, the um, alcohol proofing, as you said, just on the palate there. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But no. you're right. For the money, the 101. Yeah, I do the same thing. It's like early times. The early early times bottle and bond. Let me correct myself. Mm. The early times bottle and bond. We get 
for $25 and it's a liter. Oh. And it's like, are you kidding me? How can you even say no to that? Mm. It drinks a lot like this. This is a little bit smoother. Um, that one's got a little bit more, um, I don't want to say astringency, but yeah. it's, just, it's not as clean. But at $25 yep. for a liter. It's a mixer. Yep. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. Like, you can half fill your Yeti with the bottle in bond, and you're like, right. Yeah. 25 yeah. bucks. Like, what? Are, yeah. what is that? That's how I feel about, like, a, a lot of people recently have been on the whole Evan Williams, the bottle in bond, their white label. Mm. I mean, it is cheap. It's like 20 bucks a fifth. It's a good mixer. Yeah. Yep. I wouldn't drink it neat by any means, but no. I will fill my Yeti with it all day. That is good and stuff. Right. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Well, I think we're probably well past the point of actually even thinking about doing tournament stuff tonight. So, but man, this has been great. This has really it, been good. It's been good fun. I, I appreciate that. It's definitely good to get that comparison between like halfway across the world. So let's see. Let's talk about Bundy for a second. Oh, Jen. I, oh he reaches right for it. I didn't even flinch. Did you see that? Bundy. But, all right. Now, what in the world is that? Because I've never seen that. So, oh, actually, this is, oh, this was in circulation from 2013. I can't believe how long this has been sitting on my shelf for. Holy so, smart. this is, of anything. my, <laughs> sorry, my first bottle of anything. That must have been like the first bottle you ever bought of anything from that long ago. No, the first bottle I ever bought was the, um, the Jack Daniels that was sitting on my shelf. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's that's probably been sitting on my shelf since 2013. Really? Nice. Yep. All right, so tell um, me about Bundy. So Bundy <laughs> is a rum distillery in Queensland. Um, I'm not heavily familiar with them, but I know what they do. So they're use, utilizing that sugar cane, obviously, um, going through their processes and then uh, running through whatever they're doing with aging. Obviously, I haven't been up to Queensland um, to actually go and check out their distillery there. I've been to like another craft one, but since Bundy's a little bit further up the coast, right? obviously haven't checked them out. Um, they do a few different kinds. Obviously they're doing like their uh, different Solera uh, systems. You've got their underproof rum, which is what this is. I believe it's, it's under, oh, it's 37%. Then you've got overproof, which I think it's about 45 Right. Um, but yeah, super, super sweet rum. That's all it is. Nice. Nice. But it's, right. it's a huge Australian export because, as you can see, the internationals love it. Yeah. Oh, they're making fun of our age. Even Martin and Ralph are like, they're the, they're the senior generation amongst us here. It's, it's actually weird that I have. I bet you Dr. Matt you. has that on his bar. It wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me. Not in the least. Oh, yeah, there we go. So they started in 1888. So 1888. Were you guys even a country in 1888? So we've always been a country. Not always. Yeah, always. Yeah, you're a prison colony first. <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> well, I mean, so quiet over here, Jeremy. I mean, I mean, it's like... They're my kind of people. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, let's see. Yes, and uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Do you know what? So, as soon as I'm allowed back in your beautiful country, I am going to bring you over some obviously underproof and overproof rum, and maybe some like distillers batch stuff if I can get my hands on it. Um, but it's cool stuff, especially for like an Australian export um, between. So our two biggest ones for spirits that you guys would be familiar with is Starwood and uh, Bundy. Nice. But I don't know how big the influence of Starwood is in Kentucky because I know it's huge in New York and Chicago. Nil here as far as what I know. Mm. I've, never heard, I've never heard that word till you said it just now. Um, oh, actually, do I have some? No, B. Ah, so if you guys ever come across it, it's $50 a bottle. 
Um, it's using Australian single malt aged in red wine casks. Nice. It basically tastes like um, Black Forest cake in a bottle. Oh, is a okay. good example. Yeah. Oh, you drink this stuff all day. Oh, yeah. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, that sounds delicious. I tell yeah. you, <clears throat> the one thing, at first, I didn't realize how much um, finishing whiskeys and finishing bourbons had an effect on the taste. Yeah. Um, in, in, in this tournament, because I, I drink bourbons a lot separated from each other. Mm. Yeah, and so that gives you a different perspective. When you mash them together and do something for three weeks straight, and you're tasting four a night, all the way back and forth, and you're watching bourbons and whiskeys that are finished like Angel's Envy, and it beats yeah. a more expensive bourbon or whiskey because it has more complexity and more flavor. Then you begin to understand just how much that finishing process is having on that whiskey. Um, yeah. Like, um, what was it? The, the one, oh, the Nulu, the Nulu rye, which is an MGP product. And yeah. I used to bag on MGP all the time, but anybody who can run 14 mash bills at a time and produce consistent product across the board deserves respect. They may be, the, they may be the empire with Darth Vader and Palpatine <laughs> and all of it, but they do what they do well. Oh, yeah. Um, and we we went we actually did the 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 pick on that new rye, and when I sat there, it was it had some maltiness to it, and that's what I liked about it. Um, it was fairly astringent though. I mean, it wasn't really really sharp, but just had enough. Man, toasting that thing for I think four months in a toasted barrel, it's like barbecue and campfire and the smoke. It is the single biggest defining characteristic in that bottle. And when you smell it, it's just immediately like last night it was in my flight and, yeah. and it was a, and I took a nose on that and immediately I knew what it was. It was done that distinctive. And, and I had no question. I tried to play it off. Like, okay, I don't really know. I don't know for sure. And I'm sitting here going, yeah, I know exactly what this is. You taste it and it's just got that, that smokiness across the palate. And what I what I compared it to was you ever go camping and then you have that that campfire the next morning yeah and yeah. you have that, that burnt oak and the ash yeah. and that char and that smell oh yeah I just what in that's, the world it is brilliant. that's why I grabbed this that's exactly what I was thinking of so as soon as you were describing that to me I was like brimstone for sure nice nice I'm gonna have to get a hold of that. So we got Edward. We got Edward Comfort in here. He's another. He's another bourbon steward as well. So awesome. Oh, cool. Funny story. Um, so Ed lives in in Danville, like where we're at. And a couple years ago, I was completely shit faced at the bar and called him the wrong name. So he's only known as Billy to me. Billy. All yeah. Right. Hey, hey, Billy. Billy. What's like, up, he Billy? He knows that. Like, it's a big funny joke now. Yes. <laughs> Love Ed. He's great. Oh God, that smells so good, guys. I love smelling an That's empty incredible. I, I love smelling an empty glen. Oh, all those caramels and butterscotch it just like coming out of that glass. Oh, incredible. Love it. Jess, it's been absolutely phenomenal, man. Truly, truly. And we're gonna come back and do again. Sometime we're gonna have to drink in the morning for us, where you can have in the afternoon or evening or whatever the clock like, looks like. I don't know. I, I, I was up at 4 a.m. this morning. It's fine. Like, it, it's almost afternoon for me. So, or I'm going like to have lunch. Like, like, nap ahead of you or something? Yes. I'm going to have something high proof. I'm going to I'm gonna hook into that blends and I'm going to go for an afternoon nap. The wife's going to be pissed because she's at work. She's working from home and I'm out here drinking and <laughs> sucks to be her. So, no complaints from me. My husband's, like, putting kids to bed for school tomorrow and I'm just like, hey. What's up? <laughs> yeah. All right. The, like, the my, joys my of like to put themselves to bed anymore, man. I'm <laughs> through that stage. <laughs> like that's but, the best. Man, uh, you guys seriously have been awesome, dude. You you rock, man. You we are, had fun. Let's do it again. You are yeah. seriously killing it down there. Absolutely love what you're doing. So I appreciate um, that. Love it. Means the world. Love it. So well, 
everybody watching, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you follow Jez on Jer uh, Jeremy. What's your last name so they can follow you on Facebook as well? Patterson. Patterson. Jeremy Patterson. It's Patterson, right? P A T T O S O N. God, you're good. See. Look at that. Um, <laughs> but um, follow him on Facebook. Whiskify, W-H-I-S-K-E-F-Y on Instagram. He's also on TikTok if you're doing that as well. Follow him there. Make sure you give him love. Share his stuff. Like his stuff. Love it, love it, love it. And you have been absolutely awesome. Love you. Love your product. Love what you're doing. You love him? That escalated quickly. I do, man. Sorry. I do. There's nothing wrong with that. I appreciate that love. And <laughs> it's reciprocated. Don't worry. Like it, hey, it's full it's on all love. Bro. Full on bro love right there, man. Full on. I, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> so, appreciate that. Guys, Jeremy James, the bourbon realtor. La Hannah. The bourbon. I princess. 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 Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Jez, the, the Aussie bourbon guy, the American down south, um, whatever. <laughs> and it's whatever funny, works, I'll take anything. I, I halfway expected your video to be upside down, but, you know, I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Here we, there we go. That that's better. I like that. Is that better? Is that that so works right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna rewatch that and screen cap just that frame because that's priceless. <laughs> Amazing. All right, love you, man. See you soon. We'll catch up on on social. We'll see you.